Hello, this video is going to be about exceptions and exception handling. So let's look, talk about it. Um, so first, the basic explanation of exceptions is to realize that when we're running through our program, uh, there's a chance it's going to break. There's a chance it's not going to be able to do what we ask it to do. So exceptions are a way of recognizing that up front. And instead of having our program completely crash, have some way to kind of handle it so that it doesn't just uh, turn off. So an easy example of an exceptional case would be simple division. Uh, if I were to ask you to solve this problem, say x is equal to 4 divided by 2, say, well, it's 2, no problem. It's an easy, easy problem to solve. If I were to say solve this problem, x is equal to 4 divided by y, and y happens to be 2, it's the exact same problem. Again, it's really easy. But if I were to change y to a 0, we're going to have an issue. Now, let's say this is in a Java program, and I were to say y is an int and x is an int. Uh, I guess I should write, write it this way, 4 divided by y. Right. Uh, at compile time, all the computer is going to do is say, all right, y is an int, x is an int, 4 is an int, 4 divided by y, which is an int. You can divide integers by each other, so there's no problem. The compiler is not going to look to see what values are there. You know, especially if instead of having <coughs> excuse me, uh, a zero written in there, what if I had some kind of scanner, my scanner, and asked, asked it to get the next int from the keyboard? There's no way to know at compile time what's going to be typed in. So there's a chance a zero could be typed in, and that would break our program. Now, uh, this is a really simple uh, example because when this happens, uh, an exception is already thrown. So your program knows and understands, Java language knows and understands that there's a, a potential to put a zero here. And if that happens, uh, you got to stop. It, it, you're not doing something right. So what happens in this code right here is that uh, an exception is going to get created. This will happen you know, at runtime. Exception will get created and thrown out. Uh, what that means is the, the program essentially stops what it's doing and looks for a place for this exception to land. Now, uh, if you don't have a place for it to land inside your program, if you haven't built in a, an exception handler in your program, then what happens is your program ends, but the development environment that you're using, whether it's JGrasp or NetBeans or Eclipse or any, any one of those, or Emacs, uh, whatever you're using to write your program is going to basically end your program, catch the exception, then report it to you as an error. And we've all seen exceptions thrown. When we have bugs in our program, they're getting reported as exceptions. But if we wanted, we could also handle this ourselves. So the way that you do that is by throwing a little bit extra code in here. So let's just move this down. Int x equals 4 divided by y. And what we're going to do is when we get to an area of our code where we say, hey, you know what, there is the possibility for a problem. I could have a big issue here. So what I'm going to do is say, rather than just run with it, and if it breaks, let the IDE handle the problem, I can say I'm going to handle the problem. I'm going to intentionally plan for this potential issue. So I'm going to tell the computer, try. Try to do something. I wrote try in blue because in Java it is a reserved word, which means... Uh, you can't use it as a variable name. It's going to indicate something specific. In this case, that there's a section of code that may or may not work. And at the end of that try, I'm going to have another statement called catch. And what that catch does is it says, hey, be prepared for something to go wrong in here. And if something goes wrong in here, we are going to create an exception, which is just an object, and we're going to throw it. We're going to break away from our code. So we might have 10 other lines of code inside this block, but we're going to skip all of them and look for the next catch. And when I get to that catch, I'm going to give this a parameter. So I'm going to say I'm going to take an exception called E as a parameter. So say it catches expecting something. It's expecting an exception. And what we might do after the fact is a system.out.println. E. I'll just say print that error message. So now what's happening? So say get to this sensitive part of my program, try to do it, but if something goes wrong and an exception is created, 
throw that exception out, get to the catch. The catch is going to catch the exception that we call E, and just print it out. Now you can do whatever you want here. You can, usually it's good to print out that message, but let's say this exception happens in our program and you don't want the user to see that message. Maybe you don't print it out. Maybe you just catch it and deal with something else. Now the problem here though is since I'm declaring X inside of this try, I can't refer to it down here. So if I tried to say system dot out uh, dot print line X, well, X is defined in this try, which might I ever get a value, that's a problem. Way around that would be to say create it up here. And X equals, let's say negative one is the default value. And then down here, if it's negative one, I know that this didn't get executed, it broke. But also I would get that error message first. Now, a different example, and probably a more prevalent example, is when we're not gonna have a built-in exception that gets thrown, but when we have something that's an exceptional case. So let's say you're writing a program that uh, asks the user to input a, uh, an odd number, let's say. So we're gonna make another program, and we'll have a get odd method. Get odd. So we're gonna tell the person, hey, get an odd number, and uh, I, I don't wanna go on to the rest of the program if you give me an even number. So let's say, well, let's just take their number in as a parameter. Int num. So they're going to send number in, and we're going to find out if it's odd or not. Uh, so we might say, well, if uh, num modulus 2, so if the remainder of dividing them by 2, equals equals 0. Well, that means it's even, right? If I divide the number by 2, and there's no remainder, no remainder, that means it's an even number. So if they gave me an even number. Well, I can't do all this stuff down here I wanted to do with an odd number. That's a problem. So at this point, I might just say, you know what, abandon ship. Don't bother anymore. There's no reason to continue. So what I might say in my program is throw. Oh, I should do this in blue also. Uh, throw a new exception. So here I'm doing kind of the opposite of what I did over here. Over here I said try to do something where it might break, and if it does, an exception will be thrown. You know, Java has this built in when it does uh, arithmetic operations. And then catch it here. Now what I'm doing is the other end of it, saying create that error message when there's something going wrong. So I said, hey, you know what, I ain't getting on, so threw a new exception, and then I might put in the constructor parameter, uh, you uh, gave an even number. Even number. The end. All right. Now, this alone is not enough to, to put an exception handler in your program. So what we did is said, if they gave me an even number when I wanted an odd number, create a new exception. An exception, really, at the end of the day, it's just a string, really. It's just a message. So it's a message. You gave me an even number. Right? So we create it, new exception, and we throw it, which means now we go out of this method, we leave, and we just keep going down code segments until we find the next catch. So I cannot, I cannot put that get odd here, get odd uh, x. I can't put it there because it's not in a try catch. You know, it's going to give me a problem. It's going to say, hey, you do something that potentially throws an exception. If you're going to try your own exceptional handling, you have to catch that exception as well. And you have to try to do it. But if I did put it in here, if I put it in here instead, get odd, well, no problem. Because I'm trying to do something. There's a potential that I have an exception here that would get thrown and caught. There's a potential that I have an exception here that would get thrown and caught. By the way, my program still runs. So... That is exception handling in a nutshell. The point is to allow you to do things that might break, but to not have your program break, or at least have a break on your terms. Hope this helps.